welcome to News Kids Can Use, the show about all the weird, wacky, and straight-up strange things that explain what your grown-ups have been freaking out about lately. My name is Tori Ogawa. And I'm Emin Rogers. And today we are going to be talking about sports and whether or not they are a force for good in the world. Little of this, little of that. We have a great interview coming up later with a friend of mine who is super impressive with her sports record in college and who also has some really interesting insight about what sports is today and especially what it is for athletes of color. But before we get to that interview, we have some headlines to go over. Our first one is extremely distressing, so this is a little bit of a warning. If you need to go grab a grown-up, now would be a good time. In Canada, the remains of 215 children were found on the grounds of a former residential school. Uh, The residential school system was basically a way for the Canadian government to take children away from Indigenous and Native families. Uh, These First Nations children were treated horribly, and clearly some of them died. That was never reported, and they were secretly buried on the grounds of the school. And before we get too smug about feeling like this is just a Canada problem, the U.S. also had residential schools and hasn't had much talking about what horrible things went on there and certainly hasn't made any reparations, apologies, or anything else to the families of those children who were murdered or missing at those schools. In other news, beloved author, artists, and illustrators Eric Carle and Lois Ellert both very famous for their artwork and children's picture books, have both passed away this last week. Eric Carle illustrated Brown Bear, Brown Bear, and The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and Lois Ellert illustrated Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and Growing Vegetable Soup. These are just some of their many, many picture books, and their art and stories have inspired many people around the world, and they were just so amazing, and they will be greatly missed. Finally, our last headline is Juneteenth. Governor Inslee declared Juneteenth as an official holiday, which is celebrated on June 19th. And so Juneteenth, if you don't know, is also known as Emancipation Day or Freedom Day, which marks the day when Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas in 1865 to inform the last enslaved African-Americans that they were set free. Yeah, this holiday has been gaining momentum, especially lately in the wake of racial justice protests of the last year, and people have been really taking notice of it, which is honestly fantastic. Everybody should pay attention to our history, especially the parts that we're less comfortable with. And when we can celebrate something that truly was good for people, then we should do that too. So on today's big deal, we are talking sports. As Emma mentioned, we're kind of talking about the good side of sports and then also how sports cannot be so great. There have been some really big sports stories recently, and we just wanted to highlight those. And so first, Simone Biles is the first woman to perform our Yurchenko double pike in a competition, which has been a huge accomplishment in the gymnastics world. She's breaking barriers and it's just sports can be a celebration and recognition for great achievements and hard work. And that's what a lot of athletes do. They spend all their time working towards these big goals. And so we just want to celebrate that. And that's really how sports can really be a good thing. Right. They can inspire us to be our best selves. Unfortunately, on the other hand, they can also inspire some very bad behavior all around. And they can make us look at people like the athletes as maybe only there for our entertainment instead of there to be like people and try to do the best that they can do. So Naomi Osaka, who's the number two ranked tennis player in the world, recently got the bad end of this, where she had to withdraw from the French Open because she refused to give a post-match interview. That shouldn't be that big a deal, but she was fined $15,000 and told that she might be banned from future major tournaments if she continued to not do interviews. And she said she didn't want to do interviews because they were bad for her mental health. My personal opinion is athletes should be allowed to take care of themselves. Same kind of thing goes on a bigger scale for the Olympics. In Japan, a lot of people in Japan do not want to hold the Olympics this year because they're afraid it'll be dangerous for them and dangerous as far as COVID-19 and that it might spread or even create new versions of the virus. But there's a lot of money behind the Olympics and the Olympic Committee is pretty much just ignoring all those people who are afraid for their safety. And that includes athletes, officials, doctors, hospitals, and the national just government. If they want to do something, they are going to do it because there's a lot of money behind it. So right now we're going to go and talk to my friend Dorcas Akini Jansen, who was a, I think, three or four time All-American in track and field in college. And she has some really interesting insight into how sports can kind of go well, how it can go badly, and how you can help make sure that even at the high school or 
elementary school team level, you are making sure that it is going in a good direction. Hi, thanks for being with us. Can you please tell us your name, your pronouns, and what you wanted to be when you grew up when you were five years old? My name is Dorcas. I use she her pronouns, and I wanted to be a teacher. So what are some common challenges that young student athletes of color face? I think one of the most common challenges is managing multiple identities within an environment that's not necessarily made for you. So being a student, being an athlete, and also being a person of color within each individual domain comes with its added challenges. And then experiencing the compounded effect of being all three is another challenge in and of itself. So how can teammates and classmates be helpful with those challenges? Yeah, I think that being patient, being kind, listening to one another is just awesome for being a good human. And what I really loved about you, Emin, being your teammate was that you were open and you left space for me um, in a way that really felt good and le left me feeling cared for. If you could meet your young self now, what would you want to say to her or how would you want to help her? Gosh, I would really want to tell her that she doesn't have to care about what other people think. What really sucks now is feeling the insecurities that I allowed to sort of seep into myself um, when I was a kid. Dealing with, you know, feedback from other people or pe people telling you things that don't feel true to you, but allowing that to really work into your soul is tough because it hangs with you as you grow older. And, you know, being an athlete, I think that that was an added pressure, wanting to be perfect and wanting to achieve in this way that allowed me to feel as though I was worthy. But knowing now that none of that stuff really mattered. So I wish that being able to navigate all of these different pieces of myself could have been more fluid and more open to my own values rather than being so heavy laden with other people's values. Well, thank you, Dorcas, for being here today. We're so lucky to have you uh, speak about student athletes of color. Is there any last words you'd like to say? I don't think so. I love being here. I really appreciate y'all for doing this. Um, thank you. Thanks for watching News Kids Can Use, a show about all the weird, wacky, and straight up strange things that have been making your grown-ups freak out about the news lately. We hope that you enjoyed the show. We'll be back in two weeks. I'm Tori O'Gowell. And I'm Emin Rogers. And if you are a sports player, make sports a force for good!